Hey, I'm Hesham. Thanks for joining Pushing Film today. I want to talk about Negative Lab Pro version 3.11. This is the latest version of this great popular software for converting your negatives when digitizing your film. Is it still worth it? Is it still the best option out there? Cost 99 US dollars. Is it better to pay for one of the competing options or to use some of these new options that are free? What would I recommend? I'm gonna get into all that because I haven't done anything on NLP since version two. And there was a significant upgrade up to version three, which added the role analysis, overall better conversion, a better engine for color management. Uh, and this new 3.11 added other features like the another refinement to the color engine, the ability to still use the classic color engine, uh, support for processing positive files for your slide film or just working even with digital camera files. Uh, UI improvements, bug fixes, there were some new LUTs and profiles, you could save your own profiles. Uh, and yeah, some of these improvements are from version three, like the lab globe, lab fade, saturation control was better. The undo button was a huge one because that was a bit of a, an annoyance, not being able to undo something if you made a mistake. Now you can undo in increments and redo, which seems like a minor thing, but we're all used to that. So that was a great improvement. And now there's a lot of competing options or improvements to other pre-existing competing options like the Film Lab app came out. You have Smart Convert from Filmomat. There is the Grain to Pixel, some open source options like Filmvert and the Film Convert app. Cine still also launched their CS uh, presets, the conversion presets to coincide with their Spectracolor CS Lite Plus Lite. And I'm gonna talk more about that later, but is it still worth getting NLP? Is it still the best option? Just to give you a TLDR, if you don't wanna watch the whole video, basically the answer is if you're already using Lightroom or you're paying for Lightroom or willing to use and pay for Lightroom, I personally still think NLP is the best option overall in terms of results, usability, and value. However, if you're not already using Lightroom, would I recommend you run out and subscribe and pay for it just to use NLP? Then, not necessarily. I would say try it first. And the answer is maybe because some of these standalone apps have started to close the gap. And some of the best ones out there in my experience that I've used included the Smart Convert app from Filmomat, but that costs about double the price of NLP. So is it better to go pay for Lightroom on a monthly basis just to use NLP? That's a hard question to answer because if you're not going to also get other use out of Lightroom, which is a very great software for managing your images and editing, you know, color adjustments, exporting your files, printing them, all that stuff, then yeah, it could still be worth paying monthly for Lightroom if you think you get a lot of use out of it. If you were planning on maybe getting it anyway, then you're kind of getting more than just NLP out of it. But if you were purely just buying off NLP, then no, I would say try NLP first. I think there's still a free trial that Adobe gives you for Lightroom. NLP has a free trial. I'll put a link in the description for a free trial of NLP version three that gives you 24 free conversions. So you've got nothing to lose, give it a shot. And then go and try some of the competing options as well. Smart Convert has a free trial. It leaves a watermark on the images, but you can go try that, try Film Lab, try the free ones, you got nothing to lose there and see what you think. So that's the short answer. It really depends on your usage of Lightroom, whether it already exists and whether you'd be willing to pay for that if you're not already. In my experience, I really liked Smart Convert. I just liked the user interface, the way it has the color balancing control similar to what you would find on a Frontier or Naritsu lab scanner, where instead of a normal blue, orange, white balance, you have a cyan red control, you have a green magenta control, and then a blue yellow control with density adjustment. So very much like what you would have on a control panel for a Frontier. It's also designed to work with the film amount ecosystem of hardware, but you don't need to use that hardware. I tried it with images that I had already digitized or some that I was using from my trial of this new CS Lite and it worked really well. It was giving me great conversions straight out of the software. It has a great auto cropping feature. And these are some of the advantages of having a standalone software. More important thing is that they gave you a great starting point. They were overall accurate and overall pretty good compared to some of the competing options I've used besides NLP. So I really like that software. There are things I would like to see improved. There were still some restrictions with it, uh, but overall it was great to use. It was a good user experience. And I think that's really important. Plus the results were good, but it costs 167 euros. So that's not cheap. That's about 
That's more than 300 Australian dollars. That's about 200 US dollars, which is double the price of NLP, which is why I would say try it first. Same with the Film Lab app. I like some of the features in that, like the ability to choose a light source, the automatic features that you could have because it's standalone. The results to me weren't as good in the one of the older versions I've tried, but take that with a grain of salt because there has been some major updates that I haven't tried yet. But I just like the user interface of Smart Convert more than the Film Lab app. And Film Lab app is also about 199 US dollars to pay outright. They do have a subscription model, but I usually don't like that if I can avoid it. So it's still double the price of NLP, which I still think, yeah, I would try them first before dumping $200 down on that. So overall, that's the answer to the pricing question. When you consider that some of the best competing options are double the price, NLP's 99 US dollars is still really good value if you're already paying for Lightroom anyway, if you're already gonna be paying for that, uh, then it's pretty good value. I'm surprised it hasn't gone up over these last five years. And if you do decide to pay for it, I think it's a great investment if you're someone who shoots a fair bit of film compared to the cost of if you were getting a lab to do everything, you'd pay that money back in no time. So if you're someone who shoots enough film, you're switching over to doing more of a home process for some or all of your work, the price of NLP is well worth it, in my opinion. So what about some improvements that I would like to see in future versions? Nate hasn't had any major updates on NLP since this 3.11 and I think he was actually affected by the hurricanes late last year so understandably you know there haven't been any major updates and I read about this on the Facebook group yeah some things that I would like to see include maybe a standalone version I think a lot of people would like that so not only have the Lightroom plugin but also create NLP standalone and that would unlock some capability that I think couldn't be possible in just a Lightroom plugin also, I think a lot of people are trying to move away from Lightroom if they can. I don't think I can as a wedding photographer and someone who does rely on Lightroom. But yeah, another cool thing I think would be support for specific light sources. So whether it's RGB lights or some lights that use a cool tone like this CS light uh, Spectracolor or the previous version that also had a, a cool option, I think optimizing NLP to deal with those lights would be good because sometimes, especially with RGB lighting, I've touched on this on my my last ultimate guide scanning. If you plug in an image made with RGB lighting, NLP isn't quite optimized to deal with it and it can give you a bit of a, an oversaturation or wacky color shifts. And it would be really cool for a future update to have an option like a drop down box for choosing your type of light source, whether it's just like the Film Lab app, you can actually choose negative supply, 95 CRI, whatever. Not even necessarily that, maybe just have regular white light iPad, RGB light, and maybe specific options like Spectracolor. I think that could really unlock a lot of usability improvements in the future. Other improvements I'd like to see include versions for other software like Capture One. And I think a lot of people also would like to see that. Again, I kind of need Lightroom and don't mind paying for it at the moment, but maybe I would like to try Capture One sometime down the future or get into using that. Or And I think a lot of people don't want to ever use Lightroom. So having one for Capture One would be good. Another improvement I'd like to see is just general usability improvements to the sliders, which sometimes feel a bit janky. Like if you're making a brightness adjustment, for example, and you try to drag it, I feel like it sometimes jumps and it could just be me, but um, yeah, just little improvements like that. Auto cropping, if it's possible with the Lightroom plugin, that's something that I liked about the Smart Convert app, for example, where it would just automatically crop your images, just save you some of that pre-production work like with NLP. I know that you don't necessarily need to crop with NLP because there is the border buffer ever since many versions ago, but I think just the option for the auto cropping would be cool to save you if you, you know you don't want the border, for example. Uh, in the same vein, dust removal, I'm not sure if that's possible, especially while the, the plugin is tied to Lightroom, but that is something that I know a lot of people would appreciate not having to go in and remove dust yourself. Uh, improvement to the camera profiles would be good because I think that there could be room for refinement with some of these camera profiles that were maybe built since the earliest versions of NLP. If they haven't already been improved, I'm not sure, to where certain camera sensors can give different results to others and some maybe aren't optimal. For example, I'm still using my old 5D Mark IV and I feel like I get strange reddish color shifts to my blacks or deep shadows or neutral areas like if there's a pathway or a road in the image. Sometimes I don't. So I would like to see better consistency there 
specifically with that area of NLP because I also see it in other people's scans. So again, I'm not sure if it's specific just to my taste or my setup, but it's something that I have noticed a lot ever since some of the older versions. It has generally improved, but still happens. Uh, yeah, that's the list of improvements I'd like to see in future versions. So let's see what happens. What will it be, version 3.2 or version 4? I don't know. Will we get a standalone version? That'll be, that'll be nice. So uh, yeah, it's an exciting time to be shooting film. There's been all these announcements recently, like Kodak dropping Kodak Color 100 and 200 directly out of the US Eastman Kodak factory. Uh, just cool to see continued improvement and support for the film shooter community, whether it's upgrades to software like NLP or Film Lab app, Smart Convert, Grain to Pixel, all these options that we have that we did not have about eight, 10 years ago or whatever. So it's good to be shooting film in 2025, even though prices have gone up, there's a lot more support. So yeah, let me know what you would like to see on the channel regarding this topic. I did recently do my scanning guide. Uh, I don't think there's been enough change to NLP to justify doing another tutorial of the software since my last batch conversion video, but other reasons include the fact that NLP the Nate himself has put out plenty of great tutorials on how to use the software and other channels on YouTube have tutorials that have been out much more recently than my last video on the, the process. But if there's something you'd like to see me do, let me know. And yeah, overall, NLP 3.1, great software. I like the improvements. I won't go over all of them because you can just read the, the list of improvements on the website if you like. And again, I have a link to the trial that lets you do 24 conversions in the description. So if you want to give it a try, see what you think. Have you used NLP before? Are you getting into all this? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to see where people are coming from. Thanks for the support as usual. I'll see you next time.